Hello. Okay. Now I am not muted. So thank you so much for joining on. Um, whew, okay. So uh, we can't hear you. Domain and range. I can talk about domain and range though. I will. So please give me a thumbs up or let me know now you guys can hear me in the chat because now I've just been talking to myself <laughs> um, for the fourth time. So, uh, wow. Okay. This has been a, a rough start. Imagine doing a video in sign language. Yeah, I can... Uh, Go imagine. So yeah, this has been a, a tough one. So hey, Christy, good to have you on. Um, and hopefully uh, at least every guys, yes, you can hear me. All right, can I do limits? Um, I am going to be doing some, I'm probably not going to do any limits, at least on this, but I am actually doing some limits on, on my TikTok account at Brian McLogan. I do have some more videos that are coming up on that. So I will, um, I have a whole bunch of more limits uh, that I'll probably this week also be uploading. Um, so um, that's definitely where I'm going to have a lot more of the limit problem. And then I'll be, I'll be actually also adding in some limits on my YouTube channel. So that'll be coming up as well. But, um, but yeah, just as far as like the, I mean, if you, if you guys do have any questions, obviously just like anything else, um, on my channel, just go to, or on these live streams, if you have any math questions, just feel free to go to, why am I looking like this? That's so weird. There you go. Um, just go ahead and feel free to go to brianmcglogan.com forward slash Q and A. So I'll go ahead and put up that stream. So questions, there you go. So if you have any math questions, go there and I'll be more than happy to uh, address them for you guys on that. Uh, um, Dark Snow, I did really well in pre-calc last year. Okay, good. But see myself struggling in AP Calc and I've been going through tutoring and extra practice, but I seem lost on test days. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's... When you're taking, I mean, AP, AP classes are, it's like a different animal. So, um, you know, I mean, one, I would, I, I wouldn't disregard like you're being, you know, you, um, you being like successful in pre-calculus, but the, you know, and maybe you're prepared, maybe you aren't prepared for AP calculus. I don't know. Um, but you can put in a lot of work and you can, and you could do a lot of things to be prepared for AP calculus. And it might not just be right for you at this time. Right. Um, you know, even if you're putting in all the work, like you're, you might just need a little bit more time for your brain to mature, to be ready to do the, the work or to put into more of the effort that you need to do, um, to be successful, you know, because it's, it's a tough course. Like I said, it's not, it's not created for everybody. Um, and that's something that, uh, or at least not created for everybody to be taking all at the exact same time, right. You know, senior, junior year, or, you know, whatever earlier in high school. Um, so, um, you know, I, I mean, obviously do your best, right. And keep on, you know, doing, getting the help that you're doing, you know, studying and doing the work. But, um, but if it, you know, if it doesn't play in cards, like I always tell students, like I didn't take calculus until sophomore year of college. So it's okay. You have, and I have a math degree, so you know, you can, it's, um, and obviously I wouldn't advise that for anybody. I mean, obviously I had to do a lot more math classes and a lot more crunch time at the end. Um, but it is, it is definitely something that, um, it's, it's definitely something that I, I don't want you to like over, overthink, you know, put in the best work, do you best you can. And then, um, you know, and, and just kind of assess maybe after your first quarter, see if the grades are going to, if you feel like you're getting track where you're, you know, cause the main thing, is not only just the grades, right? But you also want to make sure you're passing to get credit for it, right? So, you know, make sure everything's going to be aligned in that regard. And uh, then you can kind of maybe assess to see if it's right for you or if you want to continue there. Um, what year did you have the most obnoxious kids? <laughs> uh, these are the questions that teachers are never supposed to answer. But um, the uh, all I can remember, actually, I don't remember the year, but I do remember there was a, I mean, obviously I never taught like classes, you know, um, but I do remember there was, I always had kids that were from, you know, a lot of times I saw them in like sophomore year and then I'd see them in junior year and senior year, you know, and I do, I do remember there was this one class where um, it was like, I just did not have a lot of students that I really like had a good connection with like throughout the year. And so I remember like whenever we do, um, whenever we did graduations, I would always like, I loved like seeing graduation, you know, seeing kids, some kids I hadn't seen since freshman or sophomore year. Cause I taught at a big high school. So it was always great at graduation. Like I just do my rounds and always like, you know, checking with students. And I remember there was this one year where there was only like a handful of kids that I was like really excited to like see or say goodbye, you know, I just heard there was, I was like, man, that class was like, 
that was just a weak class. Like I just did not really, I guess I didn't really enjoy it. I didn't have a lot of students up on that. I don't remember the year. Um, and I'm not going to be able to think of it more from there, but, um, but yeah, it, I'm not sure if it was just obnoxious kids or, you know, just it was just one of those classes where I was like, oh yeah, I guess I really didn't like that one, you know? And like, then you look forward to like some other ones where you're like, you really look forward to seeing different students, you know, as they're crossing the line or like overcome their struggles, all that kind of stuff. I don't know. Um, but, but yeah, you know, it does happen. I mean, just like teachers and, you know, students, um, you know, you have like, you have kids that, um, you know, I don't know. I think if you maybe have that draw for as far as like seeing the graduation you know i guess more than others are like you know seeing their struggles or seeing them overcome or teaching them for more than one classes that um you know you you kind of build up the more of those connections um with Whew. uh hey ronan good to have you on and brian how can i get better in algebra two well i talked about this last class period um I talked about this last section is if you, when you're doing, um, you know, for any, like any of the math classes, like an absolute last class, last live stream, I was talking a lot with my, um, with my pre-calculus course, which I think is in the description, um, of the live. So yeah, if you're interested in taking pre-calculus, you can definitely go ahead and take a look at the course, um, or the get ready course or the diagnostic test, um, as the school year is about, but the, um, the, the, the kind of the main points though that I also mentioned for like, if you want to get better in any class, like do the work, obviously, um, you're going to want to ask questions, obviously, and then reflect on your understanding. Like, I mean, it really is like that basic, like there's not, I mean, obviously you, the main thing with like algebra two is like, um, you, you got to be able to put, like, I think a lot of students sometimes like that. Oh, I understand the concept, but they don't want to like do the practice and the work. And, and that's really, I think what, if I was actually going to give you like one tip, that's especially good for a pre -cac for algebra two, it is to, ooh, and this is actually good. Um, actually I have a, I have a tip for like each one of these, but for algebra two, I would definitely say like, once you understand something, make sure you're practicing, make sure you're getting enough practice. And it's not fun practice. It's like, Hey, I'm going to do this problem over and over and over again. Right. Um, don't just like assume, oh, I understand how to do this. Like now I'm done. Right. No, like algebra two is a very, very important. Like if there's one thing that you probably hear a lot from calculus or pre-calculus teachers is, you know, students are struggling with the algebra two content or what's on the SAT, what's on the ACT, like algebra two content. So, you know, make sure that you are, um, not just understand something, but can like do it over like really, really well, solidly. Um, what is calculus? Uh, think about the study of change. That's a, a good, quick answer for you. If I do good in pre-calc this year, will I do good in calculus? Um, like I said, from another student, like some, I mean, it just depends. Um, and again, like your definition of did good is, is really ambiguous. Like, what does that, what does it mean? Like your grade, um, or like you understood everything. And again, like, even if you understand everything, even if you have a good grade, that doesn't necessarily um, equate to success in another class. Like, obviously there's a lot that you're going to benefit from if you have a strong understanding in pre-calculus going into calculus. Um, uh, but there's a lot of challenges in calculus as well that you might, that you're not going to be able to, um, get exposed to in pre-calculus. So it does really kind of depend in that regard. All right, there you go. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I wanted to check this out. I was going to go for that. Um, all right, whatever. Um, I feel pre-calculus and calculus are different. Yes, for sure. What's the hardest unit in pre-calculus? I would definitely say as far as if I'm looking for the hardest unit in pre-calculus, I would go with um, probably identities. I think students just really struggle with identities. And so I think that's going to be, that's usually something that's going to be like in a chapter six, chapter seven, chapter five. Um, so that'll kind of get, usually that comes in like the second half of the year. But usually the first half is kind of like an algebra two kind of mostly like review introduction into trig, um, basic trig. So typically usually semester one is not as bad for students. I mean, you get more in depth in what you do for algebra two, um, with that stuff, but I don't think it's as, um, but you don't get into a lot of the new, a lot of new teaching. Um, uh, yes I have. And all my videos are still on YouTube. So I taught, cal um, calculus for uh, I think I have two, two years that I taught. So you have, there's tons of videos um, that you have. If you just go and look at my playlist, 
on my YouTube channel, you'll see there's a ton of examples and I'm looking forward to making some new videos coming out as well. Oh, pre-calculus is easy and probably my first class. Awesome. Well, yeah, I, I, I enjoy teaching pre-calculus and I also enjoyed really taking it as well. There's just kind of something about it from there. Uh, hey, I struggle with math a lot. How can I fix this? Can I please not get the cliche answer? Uh, well, unfortunately, like, I don't know. I mean, it's like, uh, I, unfortunately, I think when you're asking, like, you already know what the answer is. So that's the problem is because like the, it's not cliche. It's like, it's like, it's like me asking, I, I don't know. Yes. Football. So it looks like there's football thing. And actually it's kind of funny. I had a student that was in at a football player and he actually plays in college now. And uh, I remember he was in my math class and I remember him asking me, he's like, Hey, you know, Mr. Brink Logan, like, how can I get better at math? And he was like a really, really good football player. And he is, he's playing in college right at the moment, uh, D one. And, um, and I remember, I'm like, you got to put in the work, like you got to practice. Like there's, there's no, there's no like secret formula. There's no non cliche answer that I can tell you that it's like, this is how you're going to get better. Right. I mean, it's like if, and again, like the answer, like too, it's like, uh, one of my favorite quotes is, um, you know, getting, and it's really kind of talks about like getting good at math is easy, right? You, you just like, I, I mentioned it, like, it's easy to get good at math. You do the work, you ask questions and you like reflect on your learning process. Like that's it. There's nothing else to do, but what's the problem with something being easy? What's something with, what's the problem with something being easy to do? Like you do all the work that basically whatever your teacher assigns, you're doing it right. Or maybe even doing more, right. You're asking questions when you don't understand something, you're asking questions or getting your answer questions answered. That is easy to do. You know, you get a tutor, get some friends, whatever else that is easy to do, right. Reflecting on your learning. You're literally just making sure that you're understanding the stuff, what you don't understand, you're reflecting on it, you're learning from your mistakes, um, you know, and you're, and you're reviewing, you're spiral reviewing, like all of that stuff, it's easy to do. And what's the problem with something that's easy to do is it's easy not to do it. And that is the, like, that's the main thing. Like that's, you know, I, I, you can't show me a student that is, that does all that work and says that I'm still struggling with math. Like I'm still not understanding it. It, it you can't show me that, that person. So that's the thing. It's, you know, I, you're looking for an answer that is, is, um, is something like that's outside of there. It's like, well, show me that you're doing all those three things and, and you're still not getting better at math. Right. And if you can show me all of those three things, you're still not getting better at math, then I will have to revise everything that I am telling everybody every single week, as far as how to get good at math. Um, and, and again, I'm like, I'm not saying that just because you're doing the work or just because you're asking questions or getting help or reflecting on your learning, you're going to get A's and stuff like math is hard, right? It's a struggle. You know, you're not always going to get A's in everything. And again, like you have a football thing, like everybody can be really, really good football players. It doesn't mean you're going to get to the NFL. That doesn't mean you're going to get an A, right? But that's what you're going to be doing to get better. And you can get better at football. Like how do you get better at football? You're doing drills. You're going to practice, right? Like how do you get good at throwing a football? How do you throw catching a football? What do you do? Catch the ball, catch the ball, catch the ball right? It's not, it's not exciting. It's not fun. It's not non cliche answers, but that's exactly what it is. It's, is it easy to go and practice catching a ball? Of course it is. Is it easy not to do it? Is it easy not to wake up and not do your homework, not to catch the ball every single week? Yes. If you want to get better at football, you should be catching pass. If let's say you're a receiver, right? You should be running routes, catching passes every single day, right? 10, 20, 30, 40. And again, yeah, well, a lot of people do that for the first couple of weeks at the beginning of the year. Of course they will. And then what happens once they start getting a little bored or they don't see success or they don't get picked to be on the first team, they're on JV or on the, they're on the second team or the practice squad. Are they still doing it? Most of them won't. Most of them will quit, right? Are they going to the coach? Are they watching tape? Are they trying to reflect on their, on their, on their abilities, how they're getting better? Are they asking other people? Are they watching, you know, videos or getting help, like how they can get better? Mostly sometimes. And then they start to, you know, and then once they don't see results, they don't feel like they're getting better. They quit. It's the same thing in football. It's the same thing in life. It's the same thing in math, right? They're, the reason why you're asking for a non-cliche answer is you're looking for something else, but you're avoiding the main thing that you need to actually be doing. So um, really look forward to hearing a, any girl the response back from there, if that helped out at all. And if not, let me know and I'll respond back again. Um, what are some practices you see from math teachers deliver to their students that you believe may not be a good idea? I mean, I, 
I don't know. I mean, I, th I think it's very hard sometimes to always put yourself in the student's shoes, like as the learning process, especially when you become a teacher for so many years, or it's been a while since you've learned things, like you kind of forget some of the things that students struggle on. Um, so sometimes you can be condescending, sometimes, you know, not, you know, condescending, or you can, you know, cracking jokes when, you know, students, it's, it's a struggle and they're not, <laughs> they're not, they don't want you to be cracking jokes when they're not understanding things um, and stuff like that, or to be condescending. So, I mean, that would probably, I wouldn't say it's a practice, but you know, it's definitely something I can see I've done in the past and I know other teachers as well, you know, and you just got to always got to put yourself in the shoes of like that student that's learning. Um, yeah, I'll be coming out with some geometry videos coming out for sure. I'm a first year high school math teacher and I'm having a hard time with the, the teaching normal pre-calc. The honors class is fine. The students had a bad algebra two teacher and they are behind any teaching tips. Yeah, no, um, it's so tough because you know, like what's the, what's the thing that holds people back in like pre-calculus is, <laughs> is the algebra too. So if they, you know, if COVID was the reason, if it was the last previous teacher, um, you know, I've, I've had some, definitely some years where like a teacher, you know, we've had teachers that, um, um, you know, have quit mid year. Right. So the kids had like a long-term sub, I'm trying to like throw lesson plans at them, um, to try to like give them the best that they best work they can to be prepared for my class. But again, you know, like when they show up the next year, they were not prepared. Um, and it was a struggle. So I think in the, I think one of the things that I, one of the reasons why I did my kind of get ready for pre-calculus course was like, I, I realized that a lot of students did not have the foundations for each and every chapter. So that's why I kind of created that. It was, you know, basically my summer packet, I scrapped it. And basically what I did is I went through every single chapter. I said, all right, from algebra two, here is all the work that I need you to know how to do. And then also I'm like, all right. And then also here's some of these ideas that you were going to struggle on, like factoring and all that kind of stuff. So, um, that's basically on my get ready for pre-calculus. That's what I kind of created for them. Um, and obviously if you, you know, are interested, you can take a look at the description, but obviously I think, you know, as a teacher, you can also create something yourself, or maybe you already have these materials that you can be like, all right, you know, at the beginning of every chapter, here's some things you need to be doing different than actually the learning of pre-calculus, but some resources. And then, um, and I used to give them like, after we took the test, I would give them that material and they would, um, and they would work on it. And then usually maybe a weekend or two, um, there would also be like some additional stuff. I would say, you know, especially at the beginning of the year, the factoring is just brutal for students that struggled with algebra two. So I would always, you know, I think I have two worksheets, um, that I gave students. I was like over a hundred factoring problems. I mean, I'm just like, beating the factoring into them, drilling them fractions, uh, fractions, factoring, you know, radicals, like just those main stuff, even probably more algebra one than algebra two. But, um, but yeah, you know, so I, I think if you can just try to spiral review stuff the best you can. Um, I also did that for, I think for pre-calculus, for those of you guys that are looking for a pre-calculus tip is again, doing the spiral review, you know, like, I, I, that's something that I think really, really made a big impact for my students when I was like every single, every single night I'd give them, um, I would do five multiple choice, um, questions on that section. And then I did five multiple choice questions from previous sections. So they, they were always constantly reviewing, always constantly reviewing. And then I also had some free response as well. So, um, you know, there's hopefully some ideas maybe you can take away or like adjust, you know, from on there. And anyways, best wish, best luck this year. Um, what should I do if my math teacher put very hard questions on the test compared to the questions on the homework assignments? Uh, the test is worth 65% of the grade. You gotta, you gotta over prepare for your test. So now you know what the teacher's doing, right? They're kind of teaching the basic concepts in class, right? But then they are really assessing to see if you understand. The reason why they're doing this is because they don't want you just to regurgitate the information you learn in class. They want to test, do you, are you actually understanding the information? So not saying you're not understanding the information, but you're not stretching, like going over the notes and the work in class is not stretching your brain. So what you need to do is you need to over prepare for your tests and quizzes. You need to kind of put yourself in your teacher's shoes and say, all right, here's the information. Here's what we learned. Here's the examples. Like, what are some kind of questions that they might ask me or what are some things? And again, like, I know that's kind of odd because you're not a teacher and you're like, where would I find kind of questions like this? Well, a good place to kind of look would be like the back of the book. Right. So like, if you think about it, like a normal textbook, a lot of times at the back of the book, there's going to be like those test questions. I'm not saying like teachers just copy, you know, questions from there, which of course some do, but, um, but again, like some of those questions or like, or at the end of the chapter 
uh, you know, you have like a lot of the word problems or a lot of like extended questions. And again, like, I'm not saying like those are going to be the same questions, but what happens is like, if you think about like a t normal textbook, you have like maybe let's say three to five examples of like, here's the concept, what you're going to do. Here's the process. Right. And then you have these example problems like, all right, you know, one through 10 do this process or, you know, 11 through 12, like do this example. And then at the, like, after that, like, you know, questions 40 through 60, like there's just like, there's variations of the problem. And that's what your teacher is basically bringing to you is variations of the concept to really un test your understanding. So that's what you want to be able to do. You want to get to that. You want to make sure you understand the core concepts, but then you also want to look at those core concepts from a variation perspective, um, because that's how your teacher is assessing you. And, you know, there's, there's good and bad, you know, with that. Um, and the good is like, it really assesses what you know, but also the bad is sometimes, yeah, you're right. Like, you know, there's some things that you actually did know. You just, you're struggling with that kind of application kind of adjustment of when it's in a different format, um, which doesn't necessarily mean that you're not learning or don't know anything, but sometimes your grade doesn't reflect that. So, uh, you know, I can definitely see your frustration. Um, and just for the record, I would always add problems like that as well. I would, you know, my grades, my tests were roughly around 80% of their grade, but I always try to do like, you know, I don't know, maybe 20%, 20, 25% of my tests would be questions like that where students had never seen them before. And they, and I was expecting them to kind of work through them. Um, they had the knowledge, they had the foundation to understand it, but they had to be able to work. Like they had to show me they actually knew what they were doing. Um, I do really well on tests and quizzes. Yep. So, I mean, that's basically the same thing. You just got to over-prepare for my mayor. Well, awesome, Joe. Happy to be able to help you out. Oh, man. Ah, Christy, thank you. I was just going through right through. I was like, wow, wow, wow. Why is my chat going so crazy? Thanks, Christy. Uh, was math hard when you were in high school? Yeah, I mean, well, I don't... I mean, I struggled with it when I was in high school. So, yeah, I guess. Um, well, awesome, Joe. Imagine there's a magic pill that take and you'd master math just like that. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Just our university, any tips on studying and staying on top of my coursework? Yeah, I mean, I would get with a group. You know, I, I, I think especially if you can either go to the tutor lab, if, you know, depend on your course or make sure you have like a tutor group. I have every single, every single class starting in calculus, I always had a study partner or a study group that I worked with. And, I, or I was, before calculus, I was always at the tutor lab. Um, but after calculus, the, I still got help sometimes in the tutor lab, but then basically I was always working with my group. So, um, I would either just take, take advantage of the free resources, you know, and obviously if you need a paid resources, then, you know, you can go down that route. Like I offer free to like, I have free tutoring, but I also have a paid course. Right. So it's like, there's different things that you need at, for different levels, but, um, but yeah, that's, um, uh, I would just, you know, most universities are going to have a lot of access for you to get help. And then obviously there's things you can do yourself as well. Uh, I have not taught IB, unfortunately. My professor teaches fast. How should I write notes in class? So I just may know. That's a great question. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a master of note taking, unfortunately. So, you know, it would, um, you know, I, I mean, I, I think Obviously when you're, obviously when you have a little, if you have the time allowed, you can obviously write down some of the information or like review the information ahead of time. I think that's always helpful going into a class is at least looking at the pre, you know, the upcoming chapter or upcoming work. Like, so you're somewhat familiar with it. Um, and, but you know, in that regard too, it's like, I think most teachers, professors, or, you know, in my opinion, like have notes that, you know, cause at least I always started doing this when we it started being asked, like I would have students that, um, you know, they'd always request like a copy of my notes. So I would always, you know, I just started creating, that's how I started creating my notes for my classes that, you know, I offer like in my courses and stuff. And so I would just, you know, ask the professor or your teacher, like for a copy of the notes um, to be able to have. And then hopefully that's something that they have provide. Um, and, or, or you can work with somebody else, you know, like if there's somebody else that's like, Again, like going back to that, like having a study par partner or stuff like that, like we would always compare notes. Like, so one times when we would study, I would look at what notes they took, they would look at notes what I took and we'd like, we'd compare 
you know, cause obviously you're writing down examples or definitions, whatever, but then there'd be also other things that we would add into our own notes that help us out. So, you know, it's, um, yeah, I think, I think maybe if you can get somebody on, you can maybe kind of like tag team, like what you're going to be writing down for your notes and then kind of collaborate afterwards. That might be something that would be helpful. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, will I learn trigonometry and pre-calculus? Yes, you will. Or you should. Yeah, yeah. You, you're going to get to it. Don't worry. Uh, yes, I've taught some discrete uh, mathematics and hopefully going over some new stuff as well. Was Algebra 2 or Precalc more fun to teach? Uh, definitely Precalculus because Algebra 2 is just it's just beating the drum. You're just going over and over. Um, but I do, I do like Precalculus. I do like the reason why I like Precalculus is just the variety. You know, you're not, yes, there's some Algebra 2 stuff, but you get in the trig and, the, you know, it's just applications to trig. Like, I just like the variety in Precalculus. Um, the square root of x squared. How do you find the continuity on the interval? What do you mean? You're trying to show that it's continuous on the interval? Oh. That's then you're going to want to look at to finding the looking at the derivative on the interval. Which again, at this point, I'm trying to go back through my pre -cal or my um, the calculus or anything. So I'll probably start doing some calculus hopefully on there. But for right now, I'm still I got to work through more and more curriculum from there because it's been a couple of years since I've gone through it. Uh, my pre calculus teacher just set me up with a computer, um, but. Again, you wouldn't want to do the, I believe, the chain rule to kind of work through that one. My precox teacher just set me up with a computer program to do, I don't stop that. Precox is not easy. When you ask for help, he doesn't help. Any advice? Find another teacher or find somebody else to help you out. You know, I mean, don't let, don't let somebody not being able to help you, like, determine if you're going to learn something and you're going to be successful. Like, go to somebody else. Like, I'm, I'm, it's really bad. I really, like, I'm sorry. Like, that sucks. Um, that shouldn't happen. But again, like I can't tell them what to do. You can't tell them like, hey, you have to answer my questions, um, stuff like that. So maybe, you know, find somebody, find somebody else that you can work through or they can get questions with. Um, I mean, it's just, it's unfortunate. It really is. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't want you to hold up on that and say, all right, now I'm not going to ask questions or now I'm going to fail pre-calculus because of my questions, because this teacher is not answering those questions. No, you got to take control of your learning and you got to figure out those questions. So you got to find it. You got to find it, figure out a way. Uh, yeah, go to brianmcologan.com forward slash Q&A. I taught inside the classroom for 14 years. Um, it's been, oh, sorry, I did not read the title. Not sure what the title, what you mean. But yeah, I, I to be honest with you, I do not remember even Barely, barely remember my calculus series and um, barely remember my calculus series and uh, in college. And also the same thing for the major. I actually, I do, I remember doing it with matrices, but I actually never taught matrices. So um, it's been way, way, way too long. But I, I mean, I took them in back in college, but I don't remember. I remember doing like decoding stuff, but I don't remember. Um, I don't remember any of the exact process, unfortunately. Sorry, it's been too long. <laughs> uh, that could be a good long conversation we could definitely have. If you were trying to study outside of your high school course, like pre-calc, AP Calc, how would you recommend to go about it? And would, what would textbooks and websites would you recommend for it? Um, I would recommend brianmclogan.com forward slash pre-calculus. No, I'm just joking. Um, but, but again, like I, it really depends. Like, you know, I mean, some people can learn on YouTube free and I mean, cause YouTube uh, online has everything you need on YouTube has everything you need. All of my videos, everything that you possibly need, maybe not everything you need, but other videos, right? Other YouTubers you guys are fully aware of that can teach the content. Mario math, organic chemistry. Like they're all like, they all have, um, Nancy pie. Like they all have content that can get you over. So if you like the free content, like, again, you have to kind of adjust like the, for the curriculum. Right. Um, but you can do it. If that's what you want to do. If you don't want to pay for anything, um, you could also go on there's websites, right. That have a lot of free stuff like Khan Academy. Like they can take you through pre-calculus for free. If that works for you, if you like sitting on a computer and like going through math and whatever else, the textbook, obviously you can buy a textbook very cheaply. Um, and you could probably even like get one from a library for free. Like if that is how you like to learn or how you want to digest the information, 
Um, or you could go through like an online course or, you know, get a private tutor. Obviously, if you want to take pre-calculus, like I always throw a plug, like I have a pre-calculus course that's a charge, or you could go on other websites and buy pre-calculus courses, um, you know, because my course is going to be different than somebody else's, or you might like my teaching, or you might like somebody else's teaching. Um, you know, obviously it can be very expensive if you're just trying a whole bunch of different courses. So I probably wouldn't recommend that, but, uh, but yeah, it really kind of comes into like how you want to learn in my opinion. Um, or what would kind of work for me is I, I do like to try to have like very digestible like lectures and stuff. That's why I've always tried to keep, at least with my course, I try to keep the videos like as short as possible to kind of make you move through and also provide a lot of practice and examples. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's just how I approached, you know, for my, for my course, but, um, but you know, I don't know, some people might want, you know, kind of more of an interactive approach. Um, you know, from on there or like different style videos, it, it really just kind of depends um, from on there. So, um, you know, check it out and see, see, um, you know, maybe try a couple and, and kind of see which kind of works. Um, enjoy your time. It's going to go by fast, but yeah, I mean, that is a cliche answer. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just like, I'm, you know, put in the work, you're almost done. Like senioritis is real, right? So just remember though, you only have one more, you only have one senior year. So, you know, sometimes you're not going to want to do a lot of things. Just do them. Just do it. You're going to, you're not going to regret doing those things. You're not going to regret putting in some of that work. Um, so you just got to get over it, you know, and, and enjoy it, you know, so enjoy those moments. Um, and just put in a little work. Don't, don't waste a lot of that time. So the quadratic formula is going to find the zeros. The discriminant is going to tell you kind of how many zeros. So Quadratic formula tells you what exactly the zeros are, and the discriminant just is going to tell you basically how many zeros you have. So again, if it's a square number, um, then you're going to have um, two. Um, you're going to have two real rational. If it's a irrational number, then you're going to have two real irrational numbers. If it's a negative discriminant, then you're going to have no real solutions. And if your discriminant is zero, then you'll have one real solution. Uh, I am currently taking Calc 2 and it's not anything what I expected, at least from the start when we're doing solids of revolution and it's kind of hard for me from the graphing side. Yeah. I mean, it's, I can, you know, I mean, take a little slowly, make sure you, you know, make sure, um, you're, you know, you put in the work. And again, sometimes like I remember Calc 2 was like a struggle. Um, I remember from going from Calc 1. So, you know, you just make sure maybe, maybe you need to step it up a little bit. I don't know. Um, but you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to say like give up and just say you can't handle it. Like make sure you're really doing everything you can to be successful. Um, sorry. I would say identities. I asked this because somebody, I'm not sure if you asked this before, but yeah, I'd say identities. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I've never taught advanced algebra, so I'm not sure. Um, you know, to be honest with that, I never really used Khan Academy. So I, you know, some students would use it on their own, but, um, I never used it for reviewing or learning for my students. So I don't really, don't really know, but I mean, they talk about that. You can learn everything you need from it. So, you know, I, I think usually as a teacher, I'd always maybe re use students as like a review service for that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think it's, um, you know, it could be gone for either way, but I don't have any experience with that. Uh, well, you're very welcome to do it randomly. I, I mean, it, I, it's in the description. Um, so to the, I'm not sure to the website, but all description to my courses, to the Q and a, everything is inside there. And Hey Ken, have you on? Uh, Rachel, Hey Brian, I just started college after a kind of lengthy gap in my academics and I was totally overwhelmed to calculus. And I just want to say you've been such a buzz and helped me understand. Well, awesome. Thank you so much. And thank, oh, thank you so much. And then you are very welcome. Uh, Fahad, hey teacher, I am pretty late in class with early algebra. We got into pre-calculus and I found myself not knowing how to factor. I'm expecting other things. How fast do you think I can learn algebra? Uh, you can learn algebra pretty quickly, but or at least what you need to know for pre-calculus, um, I would just say like be consistent and like do it a lot, like in spiral review, right? That's the number one tip I'd say for pre-calculus is you got to spiral review. Like don't, don't say like, oh, I'm going to learn this and then like stop, like, you should constantly be doing older problems and remembering because that's what students struggle with pre-calculus is not remembering the previous material. So you got to put in that, you got to put in that work. Um, to go from, 
um, to go from vertex form to standard form, you just need to expand the binomial and then combine like terms. So, you know, vertex form, you have like an X minus H quantity squared or like X minus one quantity squared, like multiply that out X minus one times X minus one. Um, and then, and then go ahead and simplify. Uh, anyone have advice for me? I'm a ninth grader and taking math to honors sophomore, and it's really hard to grasp and understand the material. Should I drop the class? Uh, I don't like dropping classes at the, like, unless you really feel like there, you should not be in the class. Um, I would just ask yourself, like, are you doing everything you possibly can be doing to, you know, understand the information or do the best you possibly can, um, in that class, you know? And, um, the, you know, are you doing everything you need to be doing to be able to close the work, to get your help that you need, right? Because some classes are harder. Like, that's fine. Like, you're going to have to fight for it, right? And I'm not saying you shouldn't drop the class. Like, maybe dropping the class is the right thing for you. I don't know what you're trying to achieve or, you know, where where you're kind of at. But I'm like, I, I just really, I want to make sure you're putting up a fight before you just say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm just going to give up or drop it, right? So, um, you know, obviously you want to talk to the people that are going to be impacting that decision, your parents, your teacher, um, you know, your school counselor, but, uh, but yeah, the question I always ask students when they want to drop my class is like, have you, do you, have you done everything that you feel is, have you done everything possible to be successful in my class? And that's the question I ask you. Have you done everything possible, everything possible that you feel to be successful in your algebra two class? And a lot of students, most students, 99% of the students say, no, I have not. Like there's other things I can be doing. And then of course there's not 90%, maybe like 95%. But then, then there's the other ones who are like, yeah, I'm not supposed to be in this class or no, I don't want to be in this class or I don't want to take out, you know, I don't want to take honors anymore. I don't want to be an AP and blah, 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 or like whatever may be the case. And, uh, or like, yeah, I'm definitely not prepared for this class. Um, you know, and like, yeah, so those things, it's like, it makes sense. But for a lot of the students, they are, that is where they want to be. That is what they should be in. And we just need to kind of overcome some of their struggles. So don't give up yet, but I do want you to kind of answer those questions um, for yourself as well. Uh, yeah, if you submit your questions at brianmcclogan.com forward slash QA. Well, hey, Dan, thank you so much for the super chat. I greatly appreciate that. Smile and face and sunglasses. I love it. Thank you. Uh, I don't know. I have no idea about physics. I'm not a big fan of physics, unfortunately. So I don't, yeah, I don't have much challenge for you. Um, uh, no, I've never taught it. Uh, I don't know. Actually, I haven't really studied much on the algebra two things. Well, the two legs squared equal the hypotenuse squared, but I'm not, I mean, that's, not, I mean, there's a lot of more relationships outside of the triangles, um, from on there, but, um, uh, but yeah, that's, that's really about it. So, um, all right. Well, thank you so much guys for adding in some of my questions. Oh, wow. I got a lot more questions. That's awesome. Um, dang it. I wasn't planning on doing some math, but all right. I was like, Hey, you know what? Maybe I do just want to say, thank you so much. Awesome. Well, you're very welcome. All right. Well, I wasn't actually going to do some math. I was actually tired tonight. I was like, Hey, no questions came in, but then I see a whole bunch of you guys submitted questions. So um, um, I do what question are you talking about like submitting a form on my website? Um, I usually, unless that's usually going to be for a minute, like, I'm not sure what questions you're referring to. Like Pugsy, what, what question do you submit on my website? Do you submit like on my form on free math videos? Or are you talking about like for a question on Brian Um, so let me know on that. Well, thanks, Dan, again, for another super chat. I love it. Uh, hey, Arav, how did it get to have you on? Um, Arav, uh, have you ever done a competition? No, I, have, I mean, not myself, no. Um, I used to do it for Mu Alpha Theta. I used to be a part of the Mu Alpha Theta and for our school. And so we did, I helped students like prepare for the competition. But that was really, that was really about as far as I went. I never had competitions or winning competitions. Um, and I don't know, yeah, Pugs, I'm just kind of curious what your question was, because usually everything that gets submitted on the form goes to my email, um, which obviously email is not my favorite mode of communication, but I mean, unless it's something that is directly towards like a course or like an issue on there, um, that's really where I work on that for the respond, um, or, you know, something that needs to be addressed. But as far as like asking math questions or anything like that, the best thing to kind of like 
reach out to me would be like either on Discord or on Instagram uh, from on there. Email can sometimes be a, just a mess for that. Hey, Pori, good to have you on. Uh, I got fired from the calendar factory. Why? I took a few days off. Got it. <laughs> uh, all right. So questions are pouring in. I feel bad because I was like, all right, probably shouldn't have had my link up for so long, but I guess you guys did it. So let's go and see what we got. Maybe, maybe I can answer some questions like really quickly. I don't know. We'll see. See what you guys have for me tonight. I always like to, I always look at my questions before. I always like you guys to pre-submit your questions, but it looks like tonight was just one of those nights where people didn't want to pre-submit questions. So that's fine. We'll work with this. Uh, can you all look at the domain of this question? Uh, yes. All right. Let's see. Come on. Come on. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Uh, ooh, John, that's a good one for completing the square. Good one for, you know, I might have, if you actually look up on my video or like in my channel, like tips on completing the square or mistakes completing the square. Um, I think I'm pretty sure I have a video actually on it. Um, you know, just kind of detailing some tips that you should follow. So, Maybe check my channel um, and then let me know if there actually is a video on that. But I'm pretty sure I actually have one on there. All right, let's go ahead and what's your question? I think just finding the domain here. So a couple of things we need to understand, right? So we we know under a radical, that has to be positive, right? And then we know we can't divide by zero, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, all right, well, what value is equal to zero, right? So this is not in the domain and you guys can't see that so let's go ahead and switch to my writing come on where are you move that over no why is um okay this is annoying wait there i am there i am Aha. All right, cool. There you go. So um, we have this rational expression. There you go. I was wondering why I couldn't do that. I, I have no idea. I would definitely go ahead and talk with your teacher, your parents, your professors, you know, kind of see what's going to be best. Um, but again, if you're going to nursing, I, like you're not trying to like do the math Olympics here, like take your time, you know, don't, don't, force it. I took calculus my sophomore year of college. Like, don't feel like you're in a rush and I have a math degree, right? So, you know, take your time. Um, all right. So going back over here. All right. So in this problem, so that's not the main, this and these need to be positive. So what we need to do is we need to understand what this graph looks like. And so looking at this graph, or what's under the radical, right? Y equals a four minus X squared. Or I'm sorry, we wanna know when that's gonna be positive, right? We want under the radical to be positive. So if I was gonna go ahead and graph this, um, that's gonna be negative two, positive two. That graph is gonna look something like that, right? It's gonna open down and it's gonna have zeros at two and negative two. So you can see that this graph is gonna be positive from negative two to positive two. Right, so negative two is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to two. Okay, so now we know that x is not in the domain, but also the domain is actually only gonna be contained between negative two and a positive two. So therefore, I can just say my domain here is negative two to two. And I don't actually need to be worried about this three because three is not even within that domain. So it doesn't even matter. All right, so sorry guys, I'm only gonna be posting questions that are not gonna take a crap ton of time. Uh, for this as well as ones that I am very familiar with so I don't have to do much looking up and research. So, all right, questions keep on coming in. We're going to stop the questions. Uh, um, 
I'm assuming the student wants me to rationalize. I do these streams every Sunday night at 9 p.m. And I'll plan on doing them throughout the year. So if you have questions um, throughout the year, you know, um, come on in and stop by. This is what I have been doing for 140 weeks. <laughs> so definitely, if you think about 140 weeks, how many questions I've solved, it's crazy. All right, um, let me see. Student didn't say anything, so I'm assuming they just want me to rationalize this. So, all right, we'll go and rationalize it. Oh, come on. Okay, so the main thing you want to do is get rid of your um, i in the denominator. So what you're going to do is multiply by the conjugate. So you're going to have four plus i. Oh, you know what? Let me put this on full screen. Because then I can put that over there. Cool. Uh, yeah, isolate your absolute value. And then make sure you're always setting up your two equations. So, so always isolate. Always undo your operations to isolate the um, absolute value first and then solve. All right, so I'm going to multiply by 4 plus i on the bottom here. And I'll multiply by 4 plus i on the top here. So therefore, 7 times 4 is going to be a 28. And 7 times i is going to be a 7i. 4 times 5i is going to be a 20i. And 5i times i is going to be a 5i squared. Remember, guys, the denominator is always going to be, or sorry, remember, i squared is always going to be equal to negative 1. And then over here, this is going to be a 4 minus an i squared. OK, so now I can combine these like terms. And then 5i squared, so that's going to be negative 5. So 28 minus, um, 28 minus 5 is going to be a 23. And then that's going to be plus a 27i. And then this is i squared, so minus, and i squared, which is negative 1. So minus negative 1 is going to be 1, so that's going to be 0 to 5. I don't really think there's anything I can simplify there, so that's going to be my simplified result. You know, you could distribute it, 23, um, 23 fifths plus 27 fifths i, and do something like that. Um, hey, Jacob. Call me coach. So I was like, oh, is that your coach? Maybe. I already found the answer. Well, that's good. Um, multiply by pi over 180. All right. So let's go ahead and get to the next one. Oh, delete that. Because I'm done with it. I can't post it up there, can I? Nah. All right, cool. Um, would you mind? Nah, it's that's been way too long since I did the delta epsilon. Sorry about that. I'm gonna have to pass on pass from there, Frank. I apologize though. Um. All right, so somebody's in eighth grade doing rationalizing the denominator. I don't remember doing that. Uh, ooh, this is, man, this is an eighth grade math. Uh, it's a, I'm not sure. I can't really read that. I don't know if that's the fourth root. I'm going to have to, um, I believe, Miguel, if you're on, uh, you're going to want to multiply by the difference of cubes. Um, from on that problem, but I'm not sure if I fully understood your your problem on there. But yeah, you're going to want to multiply by the difference of cubes um, to get that in there. So that is that is going to be definitely a difficult problem for an, an eighth grade, but good for you. But I'm not sure if I fully I can't really read the rest of your question um, from there, so I'm not sure if that's exactly if I had that right. Um, Beckett's, I'm an honors algebra two and sophomore. My teacher only gives us games and childish things. What should I do? <sighs> Find your own curriculum. Find somebody else to follow. Like hopefully maybe there's another teacher. Go to like a teacher online. Like, you know, 
follow, follow whatever you need to do to, I mean, you, you gotta, you gotta be able to do the work, right? So if you don't feel like your teacher is giving you the demand that you need, like find some extra curriculum. Like I always tell students all the time, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I, it's tough as a teacher, like you gotta max, you gotta help those students that, you know, really, really struggling. And also you got to push those other students. Like, so it's tough teacher on the, on the teacher. Um, and you're not going to satisfy everybody. So, you know, if you, if you need to get your absolute most out of the class and your teacher is only taking you so far, like you're going to have to take, you're going to have to take control of your learning from that. And it's unfortunate, right? I'm, I'm sorry. Um, but you know, it's just not every situation is going to always be perfect for everyone. So, um, you know, I would just either find another teacher and find another curriculum, um, that you can kind of like learn that stuff and do some self-learning, you know, unfortunately, but I really think it is going to be important that you don't, you know, just take the easy A and just be happy about it because it will come back to hurt you, um, later on for sure. All right. Andrews. All of this question. So probably when, probably usually when someone says answer all this question, that's going to be a question I'm not going to do. Yep. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't have, don't have time to be answering a 30 minute uh, exam test question. I apologize for that, but that is just not, unfortunately what the stream is um, purpose for. What are some, sorry, I, what are some subjects I should prep? for the ACT and how should I be studying for? I would find an SAT book. I'd find an SAT practice examples, press test, and I would do as many SAT questions as you possibly can um, before you take the test. And that's it. Like I would just do as many absolutely as you possibly can. So, you know, I try to do like 10 a day, maybe start at five a day, maybe then do 10 a day. Maybe you can get up to 20 a day, but I, you just, I mean, that's the thing I don't really like about the SAT um, because I'm not, I'm not hyper sold on like, the benefits of, you know, how well you do on it, how to compare to how successful you're going to be or how well you really understand what you're doing. But if you just want to get good at it and you just want to be a better test taker, do practice problems. That's how you're going to get better. Um, yes, you can go, I mean, submit it to brimcoding.com for such and I don't really have any time to take any more like math questions um, from the chat, but definitely submit it. I'll try to get to as many as I can. When, how do you find the vertices of a shape when you graph with three systems? Oh, you gotta you gotta find the intersection point. So um, if I remember, yeah, you're gonna have those three equations. Yeah, you're gonna have to find the intersection. Um, well, I mean, yeah, you're just gonna have to find that find the derivative. Why does that happen? Oh, can you show me how to divide polynomials? Why, man, so many questions are coming in so late, you guys. What happened to nine? What happened to nine o'clock? Please, guys, go to brimaclong.com forward slash QA every single Sunday night. I do this stream. So go ahead and submit on the stream, guys, and you know, post your questions there. Um, and again, all the information is also in the chat and it's also pinned, or it's in the description. It's also pinned in the chat. All right. Can I get a shout out? Uh Analyst Susie? <laughs> well, my math class. Uh, okay, I'll keep it off from there. But I'll give you a shout out. Sorry for your teacher. Uh, it's transferring, so I can't understand how to rotate something in a certain degree and use a fixed points. Uh, that's, that's a good question. Okay. Excuse me, I'm tired. I'm tired, guys. Um, oh, you got to rotate about the point negative two, five. Ah, those always get, ah. I want to, I, I want to explain this one, but, um, I, it's been a while since I explained it and I'm not sure if my explanation is going to be on point. Um, but your, yeah, you want to find, you know, it's been a while. I'll, I'd have to actually review the content before I can actually go over the extra on live. Sorry. I'm actually going to keep it though. Cause I might, I might come back to that next week. Uh, I have always find the midpoint of four half diagonals. Okay. Oh my God. There's so many words. What are you guys trying to do to me? You guys are crazy. It's, it's 10 o'clock on a Sunday. 
You guys make me read all these math problems. I don't even do this for anything. I'm just, I do this for, <laughs> for having fun. You guys make me go crazy. All right. Uh, I'm going to go out and see Jake. Are you still teaching in school? No, I just do YouTube now. So yeah, I stepped away from the classroom um, last year. Dylan, what are you talking about? You're talking about the link. Um, it is, should be in the description. Get ready for our app questions. It should be pinned in the chat. And then if you want to see the questions, I'm not going to answer any more questions from the chat link, but I'll definitely be back on here next. Um, I'll definitely be on next week at 9 p.m. and answer, happy to answer any questions from you guys then. Uh, oh, I thought you can pick one. Do you have any good textbooks? I don't have any good textbooks. Um, like, like I mean, I created basically for my pre-calculus course, like I just kind of did, I just kind of took from like two or three calculus curriculums and like kind of combined them and like took what I felt was like the best way to teach the concept. Um, but I think, I mean, I think just any of your standard pre-calculus, like, I, well, it, it, uh, it's, it's always kind of tough actually, because some textbooks I definitely like more than others, but for different reasons. So it's kind of hard to really give you advice in that regard. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't have any, I just don't have any recommendations. I guess I'll just stay away from that from there. Sorry. No, no physics. Sorry. Uh, would you recommend taking pre-calculus? It's been hard the first week and I still have a chance to drop it, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, I always ask the question, like, are, have you done everything you possibly can to be successful in the class? Like pre-calculus is hard, you know, um, sometimes, sometimes you just need to adjust the way that you're approaching the class. Actually, majority of the time students just need to adjust the way they're approaching the class. So I don't want you just to give up just because it's hard. I don't want you to give up just because you don't think you're going to get the best grade that you could possibly get. Um, what I want you to do is kind of really make sure that it is the right course for you. Obviously, sometimes that's not it, right? Sometimes you did have some issues that has preventing you from being successful in the class, but for a lot of students, they just need to, you know, put in the work and adjust the way that they're approaching the class. And, um, and yeah, you know, talk to your teacher, talk to your parents, um, you know, talk to your counselor and make sure it's the right fit. But, um, but yeah, I, when students want to drop my class, especially at the beginning of the year, I always ask them, have you done everything you possibly can? Um, yeah. And done. Um, ooh. Perfect. Should I drop my class? Okay. Sorry, I just got an idea for a video, which I might do. So, let you guys know that. Well, awesome, Jacob. Happy to be able to help you out. And hey, April. Um, uh, no, not at all. Well, awesome, April. Uh, you know what? If you're taking it tomorrow, best of luck. Uh, I don't have any great tips for tomorrow. Breathe, relax, get some sleep. I think you're going to do absolutely amazing. Um, and, and yeah, you know, just do the best you can possibly do. You got this. <laughs> um, I will watch a lot of videos in course or take a course and try to complete the course in a, you know, two days. I mean, there's online courses. I have my own online course. You know, I mean, that's the only thing I could best typically say is like, all right, find something that you can, you know, a YouTube video or an online course that you can watch or digest or work through. That's going to be like eight hours, you know, worth of work or four hours or two hours. I don't know. You know, it's like pre-calculus in two hours, pre-calculus in eight hours, pre-calculus in 32 hours. Like there's going to be different ranges. Right. Um, and you know, I would try to go through that, um, to be successful. Um, well, it really depends on what you're trying to do. Like, obviously you're trying to go on a calculus track or you're trying to go on a non-calculus track. Like if you're going on a calculus track, like do calculus, right? If you're going into courses that are going to need a calculus background, do calculus. If not, you might still benefit from doing calculus. You may be even stronger or maybe easier. Um, but yeah, for a lot of other course, a lot of other majors and stuff like that, also having like statistics is going to be something that is required. So maybe having that statistics background, um, is going to benefit you later on from there. Uh, I would focus on this year. You can focus on next year at the end of this year. Um, I have a ton of videos on lung division, a ton. And I was wrong as I flunked the first test and then I do lessons. You almost, oh, awesome. Well, keep going. You're going to, it's okay to fail. It's okay. You're going to be perfectly fine. You got this. 
Um, no, I, equation related rate problems. Um, no, I mean, I'm, I have a lot of related rates. It's just gonna be difficult because it's the word problems, right? So you're gonna have to get over, get through that. Um, but yeah, nothing specifically just with related rates. Yes, thank you, Corey. Uh, oh, that's a great question, but no, I do not believe you're natural from around there. Um, you just got to put in the work. That's it, guys. All right, guys, you are blowing up my questions, which is so awesome. I am so thankful for that, but I got to go. I am exhausted from today. So I will see you guys, though, next week, 9 p.m. Um, go ahead and submit your questions, and I'll look forward to answering them. All right, cheers.